Will is, is a very exciting young player, of course, and has been on the radar ever since uh, the under-19 pathways. He, he excelled there. Uh, his performances in, in Sheffield Shield cricket when he has played has, has, have been outstanding. There's no doubt about that. Um, we obviously uh, check on our players these days. We, we get uh, reports, whether it's Will or whether it's anybody else, uh, medical reports, and, and all reports are that he's fine, fit and available to play if required. Yeah, well, well, Sean certainly um, hasn't done what we would like him to have done over the last period, of course, and, and I'm sure he, he would say the same thing. Uh, as far as the Ashes goes, that's a little way off. He now has an opportunity in one-day cricket um, to get some form back, and then we'll, we'll worry about that when the time comes, but the door is certainly not closed. Obviously, we're looking now after the Indian series to, to shore up our top order. There, there can be no doubts. And as Justin Langer quite rightly points out, that's the, that's the engine room. You know, we, we need that to be strong if we possibly can. So uh, Joe Burns has a, a, a record in Test cricket. He scored hundreds. There's no doubt about that. And he has been in good form leading up to uh, when the Big Bash started, of course. Matt Renshaw, on the other hand, is a very, very highly regarded young player. We know he can score a lot of runs. He, he's done that in Test cricket. He scored a lot of runs in England when he went over there playing county cricket. And of course, you know, with the Ashes in mind, we thought it was an appropriate time now to get him back and in around the group um, with a view to looking forward. Yeah, look, I, I have no doubts Marcus Harris has, uh, has done very, very well. He, he really has looked the goods against, and we must also acknowledge, uh, a very, very strong Indian side and, and Indian bowling attack. Uh, probably one of the better ones we've seen out here from Indi India for some time. Um, he ha has looked the goods uh, as an opening opening bat. There's no doubt about that. Travis Head has done reasonably well as a as a player coming coming through. We'd like to continue, obviously, to in encourage him. Um, Nathan Lyon, of course, always bowls well for us. The fast bowlers, you know, there's probably been some conjecture about that over the series, but uh, you know. Uh, they are definitely our, our best three fast bowlers. I don't think anybody would argue that. Whether they're the best unit and operating as the best unit at the moment, I'm sure there's some improvement c that can be had there as well. W with the communication thing, I, I would like to clarify that if I, if I possibly could. I, I won't get into individual cases, of course, but uh, the procedure is, of course, when, when we select a side, uh, players are notified by myself. This is, this is what I do. Uh, notified whether they're in and those that have been left out of of the previous team or, or squad get notified. They are given a reason. It, it may well be two, three lines or what have you because I'm up front and, and say the truth. So from there, if there is any further clarity required, we encourage them to either call me back or ask for, ask for another meeting, et cetera, et cetera, so we can go through it again. We also in, encourage all the, the state coaches uh, to encourage their players to to give me a call if they want some feedback, give a coach a, you know the coach a call if they want some feedback, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's an open line of communication. It's their careers, so if they're unclear about anything, we'd like to think that they can get some clarity if they want and take some ownership of their careers. The state talent managers as well are encouraged to encourage the players to, to give us a call, as is the, the chairman of selectors from their respective states. So there's an open line of communication, but with Matthew Wade, uh, it's fantastic that he's scoring a lot of runs. It wasn't long ago that he was in our test test squad, he struggled and, and, and we obviously dropped him. He was weak keeping at that stage. He's playing as a weak keeper batsman for, for Tasmania and it just so happens we have a weak keeper batsman in, in our test match side right now and that's Tim Payne who is the captain. It is, as I suggested it's great to see Matthew scoring some runs but if, if Matthew wants to be considered as a straight out batsman it would be nice um, to see him batting up a little bit higher for Tasmania and that conversation has been had. There, there's no, nothing to do with that at all and, and, and sure when we, when we look at teams now we obviously take into account players' characters, but I can assure you there's no, no issue there whatsoever. Um, on, on, the, on the first part, of course, um, Glenn hasn't played Test cricket for us for, for a while, and, and I guess right now, right here and now, we are wanting him to focus on white ball cricket with the World, World Cup coming up. Um, ob obviously, 
when there's a, a position becomes available in the batting lineup, it depends where that position is and the type of player we, we require. Um, we've had several conversations with Glenn about all this, uh, and right now he's just content to focus on on one day cricket and white ball cricket. However, he makes it very clear he would like to play Test cricket for Australia. There's no doubt about that.